Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This one's kind of special because this is an unboxing for the new Astra Militarum Catachan Kernel model uh, that's being released to independent retailers from Games Workshop as kind of a, a stimulus for them. Um, for those of you who didn't see the article, um, basically Games Workshop announced that they're going to be shipping this model to all of their, or some of their rather, uh, independent retailers, so not the actual Warhammer or Games Workshop stores. Um, just as a way of giving the stores some some sort of profit, I guess, um, because they're giving these to them for free um, and then sell, allowing them to sell them for the normal price, uh, which is $35 uh, US um, and whatever that is in your local currency. Um, so let's get this open. Um, I'm really excited for this, actually, because this is a really neat model. Um, I don't actually play Katachan. Uh, I play Cadians. Um, but I still figured that I can use this in my Cadian army as like a, uh, I don't know, a, another company commander or something. Um, just because it's, you know, it's very rare that we get new Astro Militarum models, honestly. Now one thing I'm noticing with this is that it's labeled as a store anniversary miniature. Um, so I'm wondering if this was supposed to be the store anniversary miniature for 2020. Um, and just simply because of, you know, this uh, shenanigans, the virus shenanigans, uh, pushing everything back, um, I'm wondering if they're just deciding to do this instead, that way they can get that miniature out there, um, and then maybe they'll still release this at the store anniversaries? I'm not certain. Let's so get this open here. Come on. Alright, there we are. Oops stuck in there. Alright, so here's the model, and like a lot of these, uh, you know, store anniversary and special event uh, characters, they put it in this sort of plastic frame uh, to help keep the sprue from getting uh, messed up during transport. So get it out without breaking it. Alright, and that looks like a 30, that looks like a 32 millimeter base, I think. Um, which is interesting, because, like, the company commander model, uh, is still on a 25mm base, so I wonder if this guy is going to have, uh, special rules. Um, especially considering that he has labeled a Katachan Colonel, which is not a, uh, unit currently in the Astro Militarum Codex or Supplements. Um, so let's take a look at the sprue here. This is... Wow. They really do put a lot of detail into these. I like, too, that they included, uh, two separate heads. Um, so you have the one on top here, which is the one that they uh, previewed it with, um, which has got the kind of, you know, typical mm, pointed hat, maybe. Well, not really pointed, but it looks like a baseball cap, something along those lines. Um, and then this one, which they showed on the box for this, but they didn't preview it, but it's sort of like a guy with a mohawk and a beard, um, which is kind of cool, too. Um, looks like he's got a plasma pistol as well. And then there's part of the power fist, or is that the whole power fist? Oh, I guess that is the whole power fist. Nice. Uh, he's got binoculars and he's pointing. He's got a combat knife, although why would you need a combat knife when you have a power fist? But, you know, whatever. It's artistic. It looks cool. Uh, he's got some sort of, like, foliage, too, which I think is kind of neat, uh, because, again, it's meant to be a Katachan model, which, as we all know, they're the kind of a jungle fighter, so they're, you know, they go fight on the death worlds and stuff like that, and they're very good at, you know, guerrilla tactics and ambushing and whatnot. Uh, he's got a lot of detail on the armor, too. Oh, I like that this is molded onto the shoulder pad. That makes it so much easier to paint. Because one thing I haven't done with my Acadian set is I haven't painted, like, unit markings on them and stuff. Just because, like, the shoulder pads are super small to begin with, and I don't have that much precision when I'm painting. Um, yeah, it's kind of neat. It's like that this, uh, I don't know, wooden thing that he's standing on. I'm not sure what that is. His backpack's kind of cool, too, for the uh, power fist that's the power supply. It's got, like, the little uh, servo skull kind of vox caster look to it, too. That's really awesome. Cool. Well, I guess I might as well put this guy together. It can't be too difficult, all right? He's only got, like, five pieces. Catachan Colonel. Oh, yeah, he's only got... Only got a few steps to him. Let's see if I can do this real quick. Alright, so we need to get. Oops, where's my clippers? 
All right, so I need to get numbers one and two. I like when they go in order with that kind of stuff. It makes it so much easier. Uh, snip. And snip. I really need to get new clippers. These things have gotten rather dull. These are still my first pair that I bought when I started uh, collecting Warhammer stuff almost three years ago now. I guess it was two years ago. Yeah, two years. Still. They've lasted me quite a long time, but you can definitely tell that they're getting dull because they're not cutting nearly as cleanly as they were when I first bought them. But that's okay. They still do the job pretty well. Alright, come here, glue. Oh no. I don't know if any of you guys have ever had this problem, but the, uh, let's see if I can get that there, the little needle thing that comes on top of this falls out a lot. I don't know if any of you have encountered that. Um, if you have, let me know in the comments what you kind of do to resolve that, because it's kind of a pain for me to have to mess with that every single time, but yeah, it's kind of, a uh, kind of annoying. So let's see here, so we're going to glue the foot into this little notch here. Come on, glue. Come on, glue. I believe in you. Uh, maybe? Glue. Mm, there it goes. So I'll glue that in there. How does that go? Probably helps if I dry fit it first, right? You guys are probably looking at me like, oh, what a noob. He didn't dry fit it first, and now he's struggling to put it together. That's okay. Everyone makes mistakes. It happens. Or as Bob Ross says, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Although with Warhammer, sometimes those happy accidents are not too happy. All right. All right, and then the next thing is gonna be the arm with the binoculars. This is honestly like a really cool model. Again, I, you know, I know I said it before, but the uh, Astro Militarum rarely gets new models. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that this might mean that they're gonna do a new release of Astro Militarum models. Like I said, it's, it's a store anniversary miniature though, so usually those are just kind of like one-offs. Um, so, I don't know. I'm optimistic, but I, I've learned that Games Workshop is not one to be uh, optimistic about, generally speaking. <laughs> Alright, so let's dry fit it this time so I can actually figure out how this arm fits into here. Uh, wait. Oh, so that goes like this. Uh huh. Maybe? Uh. How do. Oh, I guess that's also his neck. Oh, okay, I see. That's how it goes. I gotcha. I get the picture. Yeah, sometimes the uh, instruction manuals are not really that helpful. It gives you a good, like, vague idea of how to fit a piece in there, but dry fitting I, I highly recommend. And that way you also will know, like, if you need to cut off a little bit of, you know, extra sprue that was left on there or something, because, like I said, with my current clippers, they don't really, uh, they don't really cut too cleanly, so a lot of times there's a little bit of extra plastic on there that I need to cut off to ensure that's a uh, nice, tight fit. It's not really a huge inconvenience, though. Which, like I said, is why I haven't really bothered buying a new set of clippers yet, but I think we're definitely getting closer to that point. Ooh, don't clip that off. That would be bad. It's always good to take your time, too, when you're clipping stuff out of these sprues. 
because there's been one or two times where I was, you know, rushing to get a unit done and I accidentally clipped off something that was important and then I felt like an idiot. Sometimes you can fix those though, but it just helps if you if you take a little bit of extra time to cleanly cut it and make sure you're not cutting the wrong part. It, you know, saves you time, makes your life a little bit easier. Alright. There we go. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. Nice, it's coming together. Alright, now here's the option with the heads. So, like I was saying, I play Cadians rather than play Catachans. And for me, I feel like the hat or the head with a hat on it would be more appropriate for Cadians because that's a little more like following regulations as Cadians are kind of strict with that. Whereas Catachans, they're a little more lax on that kind of thing. So I feel like if you're playing Catachans, you might lean towards the Mohawk and Beard. But, you know, realistically, it's your army. You do what you want. I think you could log make a logical argument for either or no matter which of the uh, Astromilitarum regiments you're playing as. Um, so, you know, you do you. Come on, glue, don't let me down here. There we go. And which direction is he supposed to be looking? Probably the way he's pointing. That would be... Oh no, that's not good. His head's falling off. There we go. that works. Alright, and next is the Power Fist. I really am a huge fan of Power Fists. With Astromo Terum, it's not as great because that minus one does kind of hurt you, uh, because even the officers are still, I think, weapon skill three, uh, three plus. Um, with Space Marines, though, they're fantastic because most of your you know, officer units that would have access to power fists are already hitting on two pluses. Um, oh, come on, glue. Work with me here. So that minus one to hit really doesn't hurt you as much as it would when you're, you know, already on a f basically a four up. Uh, how's the power fist go like that? Uh, I think I forgot to dry fit this. Oh, well. We'll wing it. We'll make it work. Uh, maybe? Where does it go like that? Oh, that's how it goes. Right, maybe? Is he resting his fist on... Yeah. Personally, I wouldn't recommend resting a power fist on your leg. Uh, unless you've ensured that the uh, power supply is not active. Sounds like a great way to disintegrate your thigh. I suppose if you're trying to lose weight, that's one way to do it, but I feel like there's uh, easier methods. Alright, there's that shoulder pad, and then cut off this knifey bit. I like when they have tabards, too, uh, that go with the unit. Just because it makes the it gives that little extra kind of flair. Um, I will say I suck at painting them though. Most like uh, kind of wavy cloth, I have a hard time with. But I think it's just a matter of getting like the right base color and then the right amount of shade, and then just maybe you know a little bit of highlights. But I tend to overdo it with the shade, and it just looks really dark or really brown or black depending on if you're using you know agrax or if you're using nuln oil oh no get on there ah son of a gun come on you can do it oh, that's a really tricky piece there i think i got it though yeah there we go nice uh and then the pauldron What's nice with this character, too, is, like, everything is molded to fit exactly one way. Um, I know for some people, they like to customize stuff, and so that's kind of a turn-off. But for me, it's like I'm, you know, sometimes I like to customize stuff, but for some models, like this one, I just kind of want to 
keep it the way it is. Uh, so that goes on top. Oh, that's upside down. That's why. Uh, oh, there it goes. Nice. Because then you get that nice snug feeling when it slides right into place. Let's see if I can get this. Look at that pauldron. That pauldron is awesome. All right, what do we got next? Looks like the plasma gun. Do, do, do. Plasma gun. Plasma guns are kind of the same thing for me because, again, with generally they have, you know, officers and whatnot will have better ballistic skill too. Um, so you're less likely to fail one, but then also most officers allow you to re roll ones in some way, um, either through, in this case, issuing you know, orders, or uh, if you're Cadians and you sit still, you can re-roll ones. Alright. Rotate him around. And where does the plasma gun go? Again, I keep forgetting to dry fit because I'm an idiot. So I highly recommend dry fitting. Although that one kind of worked out. Got a plasma gun, power fist. This guy is packing some major firepower. I dig it. Uh, cut it there. And this is going to go on his back. Come on, glue. Work with me here. Da 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 da. This is a really sleek looking model. A lot of cool little details that they put in there. All right, then. Next thing is the tree tree bush kind of thing and now this is another piece that you might leave out if you're not playing Katachan just because it is kind of like a jungly looking you know piece of uh, flora here um, both these pieces so it might not fit if you're going for like let's say Valhalla and Ice Warriors or something um, so you might leave it off but for me I think I'm going to put it on there just because I think it adds that little bit of extra zest Because it's reasonable for Cadians to be on some sort of jungle world, too. Can't let the Catachans have all the fun. Alright, we'll put that back there. Come on, glue stick. Stirk. Also, let me know, guys, if you use other glue... Uh, because I've just been using the, you know, Games Workshop Citadel glue um, for most of the miniatures, unless it's resin. Um, but if you guys have a better suggestion, let me know in the comments, because I'm always open to, you know, finding new and better products to use um, and getting your opinions on that as well. Because, you know, again, I'm, I'm relatively new to the hobby. It's been, you know, two years, give or take. Um, well, here's the finished product. See if I can get to focus on this guy. That is a really cool model. And like I said, it's for a really good cause too. It helps out your local small uh, game stores. Um, so I'd get in touch with them and just see if they have it available. Uh, this was the only one available at my local game store. So I feel really fortunate that I received it. Um, and I feel bad that no one else did, but you know, them's the break sometimes. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And that way, you know, every time I post a new video and to my Patreon subscribers, I love you guys. You guys really support me and I will see you all in the next video.